to invite Dr. Kalpana Kelkar to speak on spinal anesthesia for spine in prone position. Uh, very good afternoon to everybody. We are here in the session of controversies in anesthesia and I think I am here to talk about the biggest controversy in regional anesthesia, whether we can use regional anesthesia for spine surgery because right from our training days we have been taught that whatever if there is something wrong with the spinal column then neurexial anesthesia is a contraindication. If we go and see the review of studies you will be surprised to see that right from 1965 onwards there have been number of studies which are uh, done the prospective, prospectives all over the globe in Iran, in France, in USA, in uh, Turkey, in Europe showing that regional anesthesia, they all are going in favor of regional anesthesia for spinal surgery except for one study which uh, goes in favor of general anesthesia. If that is so, then why the controversy? As initially I said, that is our mindset that the training, that something wrong with the spinal column, how can I give a regional? And the difficulties which are faced by us in our minds are, what if there is, a, there is a technical difficulty? Because when there are problems with the spine pathology, I, I might have a failed spinal. Or what should I do if the patient has already been given the prone position and I find that there is an adequate action, how can I supplement it? How can I give GI in prone position? What if the airway is lost? How can I secure the patient's airway? Because I feel more safe if the patient's airway is secured and in the supine position. What if there is undue hypertension, which is the single most complication of regional block? And last but not and last but not the least, what if there is a post-operative neurodeficit, which is uh, an alarming complication which everybody of us is feared of. Now let us first see what are the advantages of regional anesthesia and then let us come to these controversial points one by one. From our experience, I can definitely tell you that the amount of blood loss that occurs under regional anesthesia is phenomenally low. There is not a single patient who has received a blood transfusion when a discectomy is performed under uh, regional anesthesia. The operative field is so good that the surgeon gets addicted to the regional block and goes on insisting on a regional block for his surgeries. And that also increases the speed of surgery. You will be surprised to hear, but there is a good hemodynamic stability under regional. There is no tachycardia, no hypertension. There is a very good post-operative analgesia, decreased analgesic consumption post-operatively, decreased post-operative nausea vomiting, very fast recovery, fast resumption to solid foods and early discharge. All other complications are reduced, thromboembolic complications, pulmonary complications, perioperative ischemic events, perioperative hypoxic episodes, everything is less. There is a good patient acceptance if he has been taken into confidence right from the preoperative time and there is no chance of positional injuries as the patient is conscious. Why the blood loss is less is not only because of hypertension, that is definitely one part that it gives a good feel for the surgeon, but the blockade of the sympathoadrenal response avoids the tachycardia and hypertension and the third and the most important aspect of regional anesthesia keeping the patient awake and conscious is that maintenance of spontaneous respiration maintains the negative intrathoracic pressure which leads to decreased venous pressure resulting in less distension of the epidural veins and hence the blood loss is tremendously reduced. About the hemodynamic stability, the moderate hypotension that occurs is always of benefit to the surgeon and the heart rate is very well maintained. Of course, there are two points which must be remembered that the proper preloading is important and level of block should never be allowed to go above T10. And then there is no hemodynamic compromise and usually no vasopressor is ever required. When the patient is made prone for the spinal surgery, there are certain cardiovascular changes. There is decrease in the cardiac index, which is attributed to increased intrathoracic pressure leading to decreased arterial filling, which leads to baroreceptor activation, increase in the sympathetic activity. This increase in the sympathetic activity has been proven by uh, showing the increased noradrenaline levels in prone position. Also, because of the increased ITP, there is decrease in the left ventricular compliance. All these deleterious changes are definitely affected by the anesthetic technique which is used. TY has got more pronounced changes than inhalational but neuraxial block 
tops the list uh, having the least changes and that is again because of maintenance of the negative intrathoracic pressure and sympathoadrenal activation uh, of prevention of sympathoadrenal activation now decreased analgesic demands this is very easy to deduce because it is because of the preemptive action of the local anesthetic and that's why the countercurrent activation of pain pathways is avoided and there is tremendous decrease in the pain if epidural catheter has been kept at the end of surgery the surgeon can give the dose of 10 ml of bupivacate with or without fentanyl which helps for the post operative analgesia and of course the residual action of the neuraxial block also to some extent is useful in extending the post operative analgesia but does that mean because the anal this thing has got so many advantages does that mean that i should go on giving spinal for all the cases absolute no we have to have a very good selection of the cases if there is a very diffuse spinal disease then it is better not to choose the uh, regional anesthesia or the neuraxial block because the spread of the local anesthetic may not be very proper that has been proven even by uh, evidence the surgery has to be in the lumbar region and one or at the most two discs if they are going to be tackled then that case can be taken up and the duration of surgery is very important because the patient becomes uncomfortable after say a period of 3 hours so actually the surgery should get over within 1 and 1/2 hour 2 hours or maximally 3 hours we have given anesthesia for a uh, longer duration of 3 hours pre operative patient counseling is extremely important because then the patient becomes cooperative surgeon has to be well versed with the uh, um, regional tech i mean should be ready to operate in the regional technique and level of block as i already said should not exceed t10 to t12 the anesthetic technique is preload the patient spinal or epidural can be given one space above the site of surgery the catheter is directed downwards if spinal is given 3 to 3.5 ml of bupivacin can be given in our institute we are giving the uh, spinal or epidural either in, sit in sitting position and then after giving the injection we are keeping the patient supine for 10 to 15 minutes until the local anesthetic gets fixed and then we are making the patient prone but there are references where people have given the injections also in prone and there are certain references where they have given the neuraxial block and immediately the patient is made prone on the operation table taking the advantage that a patient can position himself but i personally feel Uh, the technique of uh, allowing the patient to remain supine till the spinal gets fixed uh, i somehow feel more safe with this technique so that the level of the block doesn't go high the patient does not require any excessive sedation only a mild sedation with injection bedazolam is enough if epidural anesthesia is being used as a sole technique then we are giving the repeat top ups every 45 minutes without waiting for the patient to get any pain so that the course remains very smooth now there is a um, uh, saying that once the lamina is open the epidural space doesn't uh, the epidural space ceases ceases to exist and that's why there won't be an ac any action of the top up but that is not actually what is happening in practice uh, we can see the solution flooding the um, uh, field but at the same time the top up definitely is effective if the surgeon has by mistake uh, performed a dural puncture he usually informs you and if that is the case then of course the epidural top up should not be given before skin closure you can give 10 ml as i already mentioned for the post operative analgesia this is a patient being given the spinal and epidural and this is the patient positioned for surgery you can see that only a venti mask is attached you can monitor the patient's ecg nibp pulse oximetry and uh, that's all now neuromuscular block when can we use it as a sole technique either it can be a spinal or it can be an epidural it can be the anesthesiologist choice but the surgery only on the lumbar spine laminectomy at one level hemi laminectomy the duration of surgery should not be more than 2 hours discectomy usually the most commonly involved disc is l5s1 so they are very good candidates for regional sole regional technique and micro discectomy again it decreases the size of uh, incision and the size of uh, retraction and dissection uh, the extent is decreased so this is a very useful technique when can be used combined general and regional for major surgeries of the spine you can use epidural analgesia 
for preemptive use as well as for intraoperative analgesia. The preemptive use is extremely important. There are papers showing that local anesthesia infiltration of the nerve root before the root is uh, retracted or stretched by the surgeon definitely decreases the uh, PCA pump requirement in the post-op period. So that is a very important mechanism of action. So for that epidural can be used. We can use intermittent boluses or we can use a syringe infusion pump with 0.25% bupivacaine with 2 mics per kg uh, per ml of to mil 5 to 6 ml per hour and again at the end of surgery the top up there is a very interesting case report where a combined technique of spinal and general was used for an extensive surgery of anterior and posterior spinal fusion because the patient uh, was opioid intolerant the patient had many comorbid conditions and she insisted on not having opioids and that's why she was uh, given a combined technique she was given a spinal with bupivacaine 4 cc at the same time, she was intubated, she was given anesthesia with desflurin and when the patient was, uh, anterior fusion was completed under that block and when the patient was made prone for the posterior spinal fusion, the wearing off of the spinal block was you know, detected by the hypertension and tachycardia that she developed, a top up was given and the case went on uh, uneventfully. Now what are the troubleshooters? Inadequate action. If it is at the outset of the surgery, sometimes it can happen that after testing for the cutaneous pinprick, the patient doesn't complain, but after giving the position, the patient starts complaining. If it is at the outset and if it is quite considerable, then uh, you can turn the patient supine and give GA. But if it is halfway during surgery, you can't probably do that. In that case, you can do local infiltration till he goes under and uh, till the surgeon goes un, uh, uh, towards the interior. And once the thecal sac is opened, the surgeon can inject a small volume of uh, bupivacaine 0.5 to 1 cc with a separate new needle. And this we have observed once or twice. Twice we have resorted to this without any untoward effects. And if you have an epidural catheter, definitely we can give a top up through the epidural catheter. Or else if nothing is effective, then you can supplement with ketamine or propofol. About hemodynamic instability, I want to, want to assure you that if you have taken care of not to exceeding the level of the block above T10, then usually no hemodynamic instability occurs at all. In our experience of more than 100 cases, the complication is almost unheard of. Even a vasopressor is not required, but one of my colleagues has reported to me the case from a private setup where there was a severe hypotension which was not responding even to dopamine and they had to make the patient supine and initially after the patient was made supine, the blood pressure came back to normal, indicating that the hypotension was not because of the only because of the spinal block, but there was an additional component of IVC compression. They repositioned the patient with proper padding and the surgery went on uneventfully. All the positional complications of prone position, there are a lot of complications and we are fortunate that in our day-to-day -day practice we never come across any. Right from injury to the CNS because of the carotid and the vertebral occlusion or the venous occlusion, there can be, uh, one is scared after, after reading those complications, there can be a range of complications ranging from st fatal stroke to quadruparesis. And this is usually seen with excessive neck rotation, so that can be taken care of and the region it is always definitely better taken care of. Injury to the peripheral nervous system, brachial plexus, ulnar nerve, radial nerve, musculoectenous, femoral, sciatic, all the nerves have been shown to be affected by the position because of pressure or stretching. There are pressure injuries, pressure ne necrosis of the face, of the uh, buttocks, ears, genitalia, uh, not buttocks, and breast, uh, ear, genitalia. And uh, indirect pressure injuries like compartment syndromes also are seen. But uh, all these are avoided if the patient is conscious. Ophthalmic injuries, all of you are uh, must be aware of the post-operative visual loss, which is seen. But usually this occurs after prolonged prone position under general anesthesia. All these complications are avoided by regional as the patient is conscious and positions himself. Now what is the surgeon's role in the whole uh, scenario? He has to be a fast surgeon because time is money in that prone position. Surgeons once used to regional insist on a regional making it possible to use this technique in compromised patients for us. Then the surgeon's contribution is required when we have to give the top up either intrathecally or epidurally and the the last and the most important is behavior in the event of a complication to which I'll come a little later. The experience, our experience in compromised patients after successful use of this technique in number of normal patients, we have used this in compromised respiratory and cardiovascular patients also. <coughs> 
and there was a publication in Indian Journal 2008 of a case of tight mitral stenosis with chronic atrial fibrillation. She was operated for lumbar discectomy under epidural anesthesia and Dr. Vinayakulkarni and Dr. Maya Jamkar from my uh, institute had presented this case in IJ. Now I come to the last problem that is the post-operative neuro deficit. It is a very unfortunate complication after spine surgery and I want to tell you one thing that in a big series of these cases only one case had some par paraparesis and the funny part was that the surgeon did not, I just want to have the last slide, okay. Surgeon did not communicate to the anesthesiologist the case was referred to the physician and the physician had the guts to present this case in a neurology meet showing that it is a bupivacate neurotoxicity where other neurophysicians uh, sort of uh, uh, disagreed with him and said that when the surgeon is handling the cord why are you saying that bupivacate is the cause for this neurotoxicity when it is being used in thousands of cases so after and after investigating this case the funniest part was that this case was operated under general even though the epidural was put for post operative analgesia. So uh, to conclude I would like to say that spinal anesthesia is a safe technique in uh, uh, for spine surgeries if a proper selection is done. A team approach is very important. You have to remember the level of the block and I would like to acknowledge I am not going the details of the etiology why this happened because of lack of time. I want to, the, in this presentation there is a contribution by many people. I want to acknowledge the contribution of late Dr. Namzoshi who was a real regional anesthesia enthusiast in Pune and after uh, his demonstration and his discu discussion with him we were inspired to use spinal for spine surgery. Dr. Maya Jamkar, associate professor in charge of orthopedic OT in BJMC. Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Bartakke, Dr. Bartakke hap, uh, happens to be the professor of orthopedics who is very keen on operating on the regimen and all my lecturers and residents working in the ortho from time to time. Thank you very much for the patient hearing.